Hello everyone, welcome. Today's lesson would be about market economic systems. So what is the market economic system? Uh, it is a system where the market forces are the ones that are in charge. So all the decision makers are both the producers and the consumers. They are the ones, the buyers and the sellers, that determine what is to be produced, who are they produced for, and how are they produced. So mainly, they will be the ones that are answering the questions of resource allocation. Okay, now I just want you to remember, when we're talking about market forces, we always need to relate it to a term that we studied, which is price mechanism. And price mechanism, this is the definition of it. I'm not going to be reading it for you. I just want you to remember one thing about it. It is a signal to tell producers what is profitable for them to produce. So apparently, they do care about what people are demanding. Okay, they usually would produce what people are asking for. Okay. And one more thing in that chapter, I would like you to notice uh, when we are talking about the term public. Public is a term where sometimes it might be referring to the government as in public expenditure or public spending, or it might be referring to the public sector. So uh, state-owned enterprises that are owned by the government. Also, however, it can refer to the people, so to the people as a whole, as in the general public, or open to all the people, okay? And later on, as we will be studying in Unit 3, the term public, sometimes it might be referring to public limited companies. You don't need to worry about that right now. Efficiency is a term where it could be allocative efficiency and it means I need to relate it to the term resources. So for instance here when resources are allocated to produce the right products in the right quantities, this is allocative efficiency. You do not want to overproduce or underproduce so you're using your resources to the best. You always relate it to the term resources. Then I have another term where I would be using the term efficiency, and it would be called productively efficient. And it is when products are produced at the lowest possible cost, and they're making, again, full use of their resources. So here I will always denote the productively efficient term to the term um, lowest cost of production. And the third key term that we will be learning is called dynamic efficiency. Dynamic efficiency, it occurs over time as a result of investment and innovation. So the more we invest in capital, the more creative we are, innovative we are, the better uh, in, in terms of efficiency we will be. Okay, so this is related if you want to capital. So when you see the term capital, you will relate it to dynamic when you see the term lowest cost, you will uh, relate it to productively efficient. When you see the term resources, you will always relate it to allocative. What are the characteristics of a market economy? Since we're talking about a market economy, remember, as we said previously, it is owned by the private sector and there is no government intervention. Now, again, I will say that this does not exist 100% in the real world. It is only applicable theoretically. Okay, so when I'm talking about a market economy, when I am studying it from the book, it means I need to imagine there is no government intervention whatsoever. So let's see what the characteristics are. Consumers are the ones that decide what goods we need to produce. How? Because remember, we were talking about price mechanism so when i am talking about price mechanism us the consumers will be telling the producers what they need to produce because they care about maximizing their profits we can have private property as we said before everything is owned by us by the people and not by the government and um the 
uh, changes in both the demand curve and the supply curve, it happens in order to reach the equilibrium point because we don't want to have a surplus and not a shortage. So what happens here is uh, producers are listening to what consumers want. No government intervention since it is owned by the private sector. And finally, it is an ideal and it doesn't exist in our world. In reality, it's not there. It's just there in the books because there's no government in the world where you don't have any rules or regulations set by the government. Let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of a market economic system. We'll start off with the advantages. You would be having a wide variety of products. Why? Because due to competition between firms, you would want to satisfy your consumers. Why? Because the more satisfied our consumers are, the more loyal they will be to our company, to our firm as producers, okay? So I would, um, there's a big amount of competition. So what I will, what cons producers, sorry, would be doing, they would start producing a variety of goods and services. And the second advantage, firms or producers will respond quickly to any changes in the market. What does that mean? So producers will move their factors of production into the production of a good with a very high demand. The third advantage would be the producers will maximize their production in order to gain profit. So what is their aim? Remember, market economic systems is owned the firms will be owned by the private sector and there is no government intervention. Us as people, our main aim would be to maximize our profit. So this is why producers will be maximizing their production. Fine, uh, the fourth one, I'm sorry, there are no taxes. Why there will be no taxes? Because there is no government intervention. And finally, it is efficient. So why would I want to be uh, efficient in my production as a producer? Because the more efficient I am, the more I know how to use my resources, the more profits I would be making. And this is what I care about. So when I am talking about efficiency, I would relate to the key terms that we explained before. Allocative, productive, and dynamic efficiency. So... Again, this is like um, a summary I would like you to go over of uh, what's good about the market system. So what are the advantages of the market system? Now, there are two important terms that I would like you to differentiate both goods. When I am talking about public and merit goods, both goods, the common thing between them is that both of them are provided by the government to the people. But specifically, I would like to know what is the difference between them. So when I'm talking about public goods, they are goods and services provided by the government to every single person living in the country. So they're taking care of all the citizens. So for example, I would be given an example of street lights or the traffic lights. These are goods, whether I like it or not, as a citizen in the country, I would be benefiting from having street lights or traffic lights or defense or police. These are all goods and services provided by the government for everyone. Whereas merit goods, they are also goods provided by the government to us, but mainly the government was thinking of the less fortunate. And when I am talking about the less fortunate people in the country, I am talking about the people who cannot afford these kinds of goods and services. So for example, when the government is providing education or healthcare, what they would be doing is they would be giving us public schools and public hospitals. It doesn't mean if I can afford, I am not able to use these goods or services, but usually the government's aim was not thinking about us. They were thinking of the less fortunate people, okay? So let's talk 
now about the disadvantages of a market economic system, or I can call it market failure, or how does a free market fail? We have so many disadvantages, okay? So when I am talking about um, the disadvantages, I am talking about market failure, which means when free markets fail to produce goods and services that are worthwhile, or when the decisions of producers or consumers result in wasteful or harmful activities. Now we'll see why. So for example, the first one would be a national park or a public park. Remember, when I want to visit a public park, I do not pay money for it, right? So because I'm talking about a free market, I'm talking about all the producers are part of the private sector, they would not care about producing or um, giving the people a public or national park. Why? Because firms will only produce goods and services if they are profitable. The second disadvantage would be firms will only supply products to consumers who are able to pay for them. So they don't care about the less fortunate. So apparently there will be no merit goods provided. So here I'm talking about no public goods provided. And this is what we explained previously. And here there will be no merit goods provided because these kinds of goods and services are not profitable. Therefore, you would only see a government giving out these goods and services because governments, they do not care about profits. The third one is resources will only be employed if it is profitable to do so. So if I own a firm and I am in a free market system and I find out as a producer, it is much more profitable for me to substitute my labor with capital or with machines. I wouldn't think about that. I would directly do that. Why? Because to me, my major aim as a producer is to maximize my profits. So therefore, I don't care about this guy here. Even if he has a family and he needs the money, as long as it is more profitable for me, I would directly substitute him with capital. Whereas if we were talking about a planned economy, which we will be explaining in later videos, we would not, the government would not do that. On the contrary, they would be thinking more about the people. Okay? The fourth disadvantage, harmful goods will be produced because it is profitable to do so. So for example, I'm talking about drugs. There is nothing to be illegal. Why? Because there is no government to set up the rules and regulations in the country. So these kinds of goods, when I am talking about harmful goods or drugs, these kind of goods, uh, they have an elastic demand on it. And me as a producer, I know that already. So I would be more encouraged to provide these harmful goods because I know people would be more addicted and they are willing to pay more money for it, therefore more profits for me. The fifth disadvantage would be we will ignore the harmful effects of our activities. Even if they are harming, uh, har harming the environment, I would not, if I own this factory, I would not be using filters because filters cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. To me, I'm better off without using a filter because this means I'm minimizing my cost of production, therefore increasing my profit. Finally, the sixth disadvantage would be some firms may restrict competition and Remember, one of the advantages we said um, in a free market, we have a lot of competition because you have free entry and exit to the market. However, if I become somehow a dominant firm or a strong firm in the market, what I would be doing, I would be misleading my consumers. I would give them some kind of false advertisement. I would try to dominate the market and be the only one supplying that particular product because then I would be in charge of setting the price that I want. So this is like a quick summary uh, in a form of a table uh, regarding the advantages and disadvantages. So if you would like to pause the video and read it. <clears throat> now, what is the role of a government or a public sector in a market economy. Remember, when I am talking about the public sector, I am talking about the government. 
So the government plays three roles. Okay, the government could be acting as a regulator. And when I am saying um, a regulator, it can include setting maximum prices that firms are not allowed to exceed or setting minimum standards of service they must provide and even banning the production and sale of specific items like um, the harmful goods, which is um, guns, um, harmful drugs. Okay, so the government is the one setting the laws, rules, and regulations in the country. Also, the government could be acting out as a consumer. When the government is acting as a consumer, it can force some firms to increase the supply of a certain good or service at lower prices. And when the government acts as a producer, they would be employing factors of production to produce goods and services that private sector firms will not provide. I want you to think, what goods will not be provided by the private sector firms? We just explained it a minute ago. It would be the public and merit goods. Guys, please, I need you to use the new terms that we are learning, okay? So when a government is um, acting as a regulator, a consumer, or a producer, I need you to know one thing, that there is little to almost no government intervention in a free market economic system. However, since governments do exist, there are no totally free market economies and government actions can affect the decisions of private firms and change their market outcomes. Now, in the next video that, that I will be uploading, I would be explaining more about um, over and under consumed goods and maximum man and minimum prices, where we will be talking about something called price floors and price ceiling. And by the end of this lesson, since we are done, I would like you to try and explain what is the market economic system in your own words and type it down in the comment section and try to summarize the main benefits and drawbacks of market economies. So mainly you'll be talking about the advantages and disadvantages of a free market system. Please, that would be it for today. Uh, just let me know if there is anything that you would like me to re-explain in the comment section and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Have a lovely day, guys. Take care.